Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, to whom all praise is due, the Lord of all the worlds, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. We all have heard of him. Many of us have seen him. And I am the brother, blood and spiritual brother to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the last messenger of Allah. I thank you, my dear beloved brother and sister, if there should be any, to be so patiently with me waiting. I should have answered what you ask. But still, I thank you for being patient with me. I am Minister John Muhammad, the Supreme Minister of the Nation of Islam. Dear brothers of Los Angeles, California, I have heard beautiful reports of you very beautiful, and I feel good in having this chance or this opportunity to speak to you or to answer your question. First of all, I thank you for the tape that you sent to me. I shall read from Brother Vesta, Vesta X, which shall not be X very long, since he have not chose him a name. We are getting closer to each other. This is his words to me. We are getting closer to each other. We have quite a few older brothers that have come in to help with the progress progress to the younger brothers and myself as well. They have offered a lot of help and they are very humble in their approach for helping the younger brothers with vigor and forceful. They are patient with us and we are thankful to Allah for that. I would ask you to analyze the tapes and listen to the tapes and give us some instructions. There are some questions that are direct to you and just a general program of what we can do to improve by your instructions. And you can hear by the tapes. Everybody wants to do the right Islam and everybody feels like we could get it, couldn't get it any better than from you. So we look forward to hearing from you and we pray that Allah is blessing you with success and the believers there. We pray that Allah would bless them also and we send the greetings to all of the believers and to you. Assalamu alaikum. There are a couple of other things that I would like to know. Would it be possible for us to get a release on the tapes from Brother Sami lecture here in Los Angeles and we could listen to or on one of the meetings nights. And the other one is if you have had a chance to go over 
the interview that Brother Sami conduct. And if I could get permission to listen to that and anything that you feel that we could do as far as things that you would like done. If you would give us the instructions on how to go about doing it and what you would like to see done and the priorities of the program, we will be right in line with taking care of the business. I'm thankful to a lot to bless me to be able to see the things that I'm being blessed to see. It is beyond my vocabulary to explain what is in my heart for my people. And I'm thankful that he has given us you as a guide that we could become what Allah has intended for us. I am also thankful to Allah for the brotherhood. We are ironing out some rough spots and you will hear a lot of that in the tape. I just let the brothers talk so that you could hear some of the things that were being said and some of the feelings that were among the brotherhood. One of our biggest short-sightedness in the meeting that I could see is that most of the brothers are self-taught and their ideas and ideology of the messengers program doesn't come from any instructions. that they have received. They are mostly instructions that they have conceived of their own. So these are the things that we are trying to wash out and begin with your instructions so that we will have it right. And the older brothers, they are in agreement 100% with getting the instructions from you to do everything exactly as you instruct. The right and exact and with the brotherhood will become much, much stronger. We are beginning to come together and I will continue to tape the meetings. We had one last night, which was Wednesday night, October 11th. The meeting was not taped through errors of the tape now being turned on. But we will tape each meeting and I will send the tape out to you as soon as we have the meeting. The papers this month, as you will hear, on the tape was very, very slow and very disappointing. But we are beginning to take care of that. There are just a few brothers that were really dealing with the papers. And this was the cause of the delay in the payments of the paper. Back to you. I am sending some money along with the tape. And we have gotten better commitment from the brothers to push the program and the paper with the paper. We are getting stronger every meeting. It has been better. We start out with two, three. We grew to four, then to six, and then to eight. We have had a, as many as 10 brothers at the meeting and commitment from the brothers. We we help with the program, to help with the program, excuse me. Some brothers are a little lax in their duty and responsibilities right now. But we pray Allah bless us with the strength to motivate 
those brothers to continue to help us. We look forward to hearing from the believers there and your instructions again. I would say that we pray that our love would keep you. We ask that you give the greetings to your family, your intermediate family, and the believers. We pray that our Lord continue to bless you with the health and strength because we need you, brother, and we are thankful for you. I myself personally cannot say enough. I look forward to being taught by you and I thank Allah for this privilege to be a part of helping to restore my nation and to continue the programs of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. That was a very inspiring letter from the um, tape that was sent to me from Brother Vesta. Now, my dear beloved brothers, as I would call you the fruit of Islam, I would like to answer some of your questions. I think that if all of you would obey what comes to you or what has been told to you and you know it's right, I think that you should obey it. And if you have one in authority there, please obey that one that is in authority over you regardless to who it might be, obey that man that shall be over you. That will bring more success than we sitting down talking. No, we do not want to just sit down and talk, talk, talk. Chase questions from one to the other. We don't want to have that. That brings about much confusion among the brotherhood. Now to answer your questions. Tape dated 10-4-89. Questions for Supreme Minister John Muhammad from LA. One. Begin opening prayer by repeating Allah you Akbar four times. Recite the prayer, surely I turn myself to thee as opening prayer. Repeat Allah you Akbar four times at end of prayer. Four. Beginning to speak, the brother says, I salam alaikum in the name of Allah, and then repeat the greetings before giving speech. Now, brother, those four, let us take them separately as I answer them. Please take good attention to what I will tell you. What I shall answer to you is what was taught to me by Messenger Elijah Muhammad. The beginning of the open prayer by repeating Allah you Akbar four times. I have never heard that but one time and that was regular after Wallace D. Muhammad became the leader of the Nation of Islam. I heard that for the first time on a hookup, telephone hookup from Chicago. I never heard it before like that in the opening of a meeting or in the opening 
of anything. It's only saying Allah is the greatest. And uh, we know that Allah is the greatest. And that is said in the prayer. We don't just have to repeat it before we open four times. We don't have to do that. Many of that is taught to the Arabs in the day that Muhammad came to them. That is for them to do. Recite the prayer, surely I turn myself to thee as an open prayer. My dear beloved brothers, here at this number two question, I have also said that prayer in the opening of the meeting for many times. But once the messenger told me, he says, the opening prayer is not that prayer. The prayer that you open your meetings with is in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. That's the first chapter of the Holy Quran, which opens up the Holy Quran to you. That is the prayer that you open in your meeting, and that is the prayer that you close with. The messenger said, that is all that is necessary. That is all that the people uses now in this modern time. Because the prayer that you say, surely I have turned myself being upright, that prayer is the prayer that Abraham said. And uh, we does not use it as an opening prayer in the meeting. But uh, now if you notice this prayer of uh, in the name of Allah, the beneficent to merciful, when you say it, you look at it, you have asked everything that you need is right there. And it even tells you to be guided on the right path as well as any other prayer. So use that prayer. Surely I have turned, not that one, don't use that one in your opening. Use this saying, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, all praises do the Allah the Lord of all the world, the beneficent, the merciful, the master of the day of judgment in which we now live. Thee do we serve, and to thee do we beseech for thine help. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray after they have heard thine teaching. Now you can use as a racket in it and say, O oh Allah, there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was our true servant and last apostle. That is a racket prayer. As we say it like that, we say it again in this manner. We say, O oh Allah, I bear witness that there is no God but Thee, and I bear witness that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was our true servant and last apostle. Then you say, Amen. Now for number five. Reciting Allah number three, excuse me, number three, reciting Allah U Akbar four times at the end of a prayer. As I said, I never heard that. You don't have to say that. You have already said the prayer, leave it alone and 
give to the honor of that prayer which you will find wide open in the beginning of the of the Holy Quran by Malanin Muhammad Ali. That is the Quran that I use. That is the one that the messenger used. Now it doesn't make much difference which Quran that you use in the Quran because they all have the 114 verses or chapters, rather excuse me, of chapters, 114 of them. So we use Either one, the best ones to use is Malanin Muhammad Ali and Yusuf Ali. Now, those are more that the messenger spoke to me concerning of, but yet he chose Malanin Muhammad Ali for himself to use, and he would refer to Yusuf. He would refer to the to the uh, glorious Quran, which is uh, by Pikha. So, uh, whatever that you do, try to use the best in the best of way. Number five, a brother interrupt brother Vesta after about 25 minutes of meeting in our order to get on with the business of the day such as disturbing papers distributing papers getting certain commitments from the different brothers concerning the selling of the Muhammad Speaks continues and allowing the brothers to ask some question to the Supreme Minister on tape. He said that he was not here to just sit and listen to someone talk all night. At the time of the interruption, Brother Vesta was telling the brother of telling the body of the brothers present of his experience while visiting Detroit and what he knew and lacked about the Supreme Minister. The brother who interpreted, who interrupted, excuse me, who interrupted, explained that it was getting late that the meeting had started late and that there was a lots of other business to be taken care of before the meeting end. The answer to that I will say now no one comes to any meeting just to sit down to listen or hear what one has to say unless it is the minister at a, at a worship meeting. But the thing that we are doing, you are trying to get close to among yourselves. So somebody who have the authorities among you should uh, should speak of what is needed and that is found here in these words that he was asking a question there and telling the one who is was in charge what to do that sitting and listening for a long time interrupting is a thing that people do but that should be stopped when you're trying to rise up something or trying to have something regardless of how long it takes for you to do it 
Now, if you don't feel like doing so, then you should have more nights on the same thing. Go so far and stop. If you want to get out early, just take up one or two answers, and if someone else has something else to say, don't bother with that other party. Wait until the next meeting, but finish your one or two questions on that meeting, because if not, it will confuse you when you have a lot of questions to answer. No, we does not care now about staying a long time. Two hours should be sufficient. Two hours is what we take up for any meeting that we have. That is the limits. But if it takes more than that, well, then you have to take more. And it's not proper for anyone to say that they don't want to be there in such hinted words, waiting or sitting. To get explanation of anything, we must at all times stay regardless to what, but don't have more than one or two questions and that within two hours, one hour for one question and one hour for the next, you could be away from your meeting within an hour. But two hours can be taken up for the ask of more questions. So if the meeting started late, how do you expect to get out early? All should be on time. When the meeting says it's going to start at a particular hour, then everyone should be there at that hour so that you can get out on time. Because the man, a woman that is late, they wants to know then what was said or done before they gotten there. And that is nothing but uh, a foolish thing to try to go back over what you have said because of one or two people late. Start on time if only one or two people is there. I hope you understand this meaning. Although I will try to give to you more explanation on such things. Does not get upset because that you are late and you wish to stay longer, don't get upset on that. Because getting upset only brings a confuse to the mind of what is being done because you didn't hear the beginning. Number six, a brother said that we have to forget what we have been taught because I myself have been taught wrong. Throw that old teaching in the trash and let's start off new with the true teachings of Messenger Elijah Muhammad contended by the Supreme Minister John Muhammad. Now my dear brother, here in this question as you ask, let us start anew we can start anew, but we have to start anew with the same teaching, we, which is an old teaching, and we can't throw our foundation, which is the teacher of Messenger Elijah Muhammad, we cannot throw it in the trash can. We have got to go by it. Messenger Elijah Muhammad is our foundation, and that what he taught is what we must continue whether it be old or young. Now the teaching of Islam brought by Master Farad Muhammad to us, that is something that is new to the world, but it is old. 
it was from the beginning of this 25,000 year cycle. So it's old, it's not new. But it kept, was kept hid from the eyes of the world until the coming of Master Farad Muhammad. That's what made it new to us. We never knew anything about it. Neither did the world know these facts and truth. Um, I mean in the history of the creation of a people, the making of a people, that's what I'm talking about and what they're doing. So it is all old but was hidden from the eyes of the world until this day. So do not say throw anything in the trash can that you has been taught wrong. You has been taught right. It is the person who don't know that teaches wrong. The person that don't know a thing, how can you expect for him to carry the message right and he don't know it? The best thing is to uh, seek for the truth of that which was taught by Messenger Elijah Muhammad and that will be your guide until you shall leave the earth. <clears throat> that is more plainer teaching that I can give to you in the teachings of what has been said, old teaching. The same thing people say that follows W.D. Muhammad and other people who leading their people and don't know what was actually taught or the meanings of it. The uh, people today must come back and be taught that's what Messenger Elijah Muhammad taught because they have went astray. Number seven. No one was checked before he entered the meeting. Dear brothers, check everyone that comes in except one, and that is the one that is your minister and your captain. They are not to be checked because they are the ones enforcing the checking. And if they does wrong in the checking, why well, then uh, you will know it. Everybody will know that the captain or the minister disobeyed the orders that was given to us. So check everybody that come in entering that meeting except those that is an authority, those chief two people in authorities. I've never known them to be checked. But from them down, they was checked in the meeting before entering the meeting. Check all lost founds thoroughly good and be good to them. Use straight words and good words to them as they come to you. Show your best intelligence and brotherhood that you have towards them and towards each other before them. And the messenger says that is a guarantee that you won't be going wrong. Number eight, Brother Vesta said that we need some organizational structure that might be true. I haven't been among you to hear how you desire to do your structure or what you has been done. If you are successful in what you're using and you and it is right and all knows it is right then don't remove that because that is good don't remove what you already have and everyone knows that it is right 
leave it like it is and don't add or take from it. Do that among the brothers and among the sisters. In return of these answers, I shall send to you a two brochures. One is the uh, proper handling of the peoples which was given to us by number two. It was okayed by the messenger. You will find how good it is. It was okayed by him. And uh, one is the FOI brochure. And you will find that that brochure is very, very, very good. Both of them is good. You might have heard of that one, the, uh, the um, uh, you see it sometime right at the time you want to call the name of a thing and it slips away from you. And it's very easy. We have it. I will send you one to your class of each one of these so that you can read them among yourself and then each brother will get one of his own. But at the present time, I will send you one of each of the two. And thereafter, each brother shall have one. And I desire that you will have them to be used as a brochure in uh, instructing the incoming people in your class of your fruit. Keep up with what the messenger said in his uh, four books, not just one. Keep up with them all. Message the black man, how to eat to live, the uh, fall of America, and our Savior has arrived. Keep up with them, and you will find that you will be very much organized in a structured manner because those are what is the foundation is what he gave us in there. The foundation I have from the beginning of the nation of Islam in America, that I have, which is the uh, student enrollment, English lesson number C1, Lesson number one, lesson number two, and problem books. I have those. I have meanings in it, or what was taught to me, of every lesson that you have, or you shall study them, which I can't give them to you all of a certain, because I want you first to become strong in the nation of Islam, and do accordingly to that which you shall be instructed. Brothers of FOI, which I would say, we shall magnify ourselves with the work that we are done, as said in the book, Bible, show me a man with faith, I will show you a man with work. So. Continuing with the paper that Muhammad speaks, continues, that is continuing the works of Messenger Elijah Muhammad, and much of the past work you will see in it to know that is the continuation of his work. Take it. Go about and try to sell them for one dollar per copy, which is a donation given to the nation of Islam and you will receive the same amount that for doing so I believe that the lieutenant said to you that you would receive 25 cents for selling it and you don't have to pay for the for the uh, handling and mailing 
just let us know how many you will have and you wants to sell. That would be a very good idea for us all to get out and try to get rid of as many as you can and then furthermore after this I shall send to you a tape I will try to send to you last Sundays, three Sundays ago tape, a lecture on the blind man, Timothy, in the James Version, explaining the condition that we are so in meets up with that blind man as taught by Messenger Elijah Muhammad, of which that I heard him teach more than 40 years ago. Now, 54 years ago he taught it in the city of Detroit at 348 Hastings Street. I still remember it because I love it and I will never forget what he taught to me. <clears throat> I hope you understand me today. I hope you understand what I'm trying to bring to you. If not, if there would be any questions after I'm finished, then you sit down and you ask more questions to Brother Vesta, the first man that I learned that was trying to do good in Los Angeles, be with him, stay with him until we find that he's not fit for what he's doing. I think that he is doing a very good work. Number Number nine, a brother said that Messenger Elijah Muhammad said on a tape he had that there was something that he had not taught the believers yet because there was something that we could not bear yet. I didn't hear it on tape, but he did say so among the people and I didn't hear it on the tape he had often said that there was so much that he wanted to tell us but right now I can't tell it to you can't couldn't bear it is a meaning that if you hear it some people will leave you you might leave the nation of Islam and you might act a very bad fool with your own self. You might go to people and try to tell them what is to be done. And you will mess it all up. Well, say, did he tell you anything of the kind to not to tell us? Yes, he did. He told me things. He says, don't teach this now. Wait a while. Now I can answer that question very easily and say I can teach all that he taught me now because he is not with us as you might say but I say he is dead physically in the body and spiritually in the body because when the body is dead the spirit is dead. When the spirit is dead the body is dead. So I can say it like that. Now, believing it in the works that he have given to us, if it was told to you, you might say, I don't believe that. So wait until the time come. If I am living, I will give it to you. If I am not living, I will leave it for you. Number 10, a brother said that Master Farad Muhammad was not married and does not have any children. He explained that the base, he, he explained that he based his statement on the part of the prayer that says, he begets not, nor is he begotten. I think 
that to base it like that wouldn't be a hundred percent or seventy wouldn't be correct I would say to base such answer on it let's go first father with his question then we come thoroughly with it one brother questioned him saying how do you know that Allah didn't have any children the first brother said because said believe the book or let it alone the book says he begets nor is he begotten that mean he doesn't have any children so if don't have any children then he ain't fornication he wasn't begotten as a god he was self created he got here and then he created himself there was certain laws he had to obey he had to study so that self created what happened when one lets his seed abide within him what happens to one's body the other brother said according to the teaching of messenger Elijah Muhammad the council sits to determine who is the supreme who is the supreme being to establish the next 24,000 year cycle that knowledge is passed down through father and son is it not true that our brother Muhammad in the East developed a body for the Savior did he not go before turning this page to the other part let us take up some of this I'm going to go nail about over it. A brother said that Master Farad Muhammad was not married and does not have any children. Now we can't say that he don't have any now. We can't say that. We can't say that he is not married now. Because who has talked with Master Farad Muhammad other than the messenger since the year of 1934. 1934 was my last time seeing Master Farad Muhammad. And seeing him, I was in Gary, Indiana. And that was my last time seeing him being with Messenger Elijah Muhammad and Captain Kalat, which was my brother. The three of us brothers, I was secretary at that time. The three of us brothers met with Master Farad Muhammad. Now listen good. I was a single man at that time. And while I was with Master Farad Muhammad, there was a question came up concerning a certain brother going with a girl and she had been uh, uh, poisoned by a Buddha. And he asked me who did I go with? I said to him, I go with Sister Bernstein, your reformer. I said that. And uh, he looked at me and uh, said, uh, well, it's not time to get married right now. He says, someday I will get married. That's what he told me. This is facts. He said, someday I will get married. I can't say now that he's not married. I can't say he is married because I haven't seen him since that time. And uh, it was one year before I got married after he told me that, that it was not time now to get married. It was one year before I got married. 
That was in March when he told me that. And it was in March 1935 when I met my wife uh, for marriage. And that was the same one that I told him that I was going with. I went with her two years before marriage. Now, I hope that explains concerning Master Farad being married or not married. Now the book tells us, as we say the book, the book tells us uh, uh, that God and Jesus is married. I'm talking about Bible. And they call it the church. Now if Jesus or the God never married, uh, how come about Jesus? If God never married or never had children, how did Jesus come about? And it tells us that that was his only begotten son. How did he beget him? So we are at loss when we start talking about such things concerning the God. Now, you might have heard these things. You might have heard uh, the messenger says that he was not married. And, but I wonder, did you understand when he said, I'm seeing, saying the messenger, did you understand when he said he, be, God get his, he begets not, nor is he begotten? The understanding of that is, brother, uh, in the beginning, the 25,000 year cycle was not the beginning. The, the beginning of him, when he begot himself, he was a spark of light, which was dark in darkness. And he stayed in that darkness for trillions of years before he appeared in the light and made his own self. The messenger taught that he took him a million years before that he could even come forth himself. This is your first God that create. When he said that he well, beget us not, he did not beget anybody, but he create then male and female because he had the power to do so he came from the uh, triple darkness and by him doing so every living creature today must be born through or out of triple darkness so we being as sons of the God of God after he had begotten uh, created uh, a female and male to bring us forward not meaning Adam in the Bible but long before that Adam in the Bible and brought us about we came out from tribal darkness from the womb of our mother this first God came out of tribal darkness from the wounds of the universe which uh, the Bible tried to say the earth was dark and there was no light and he said let there be light. The word be is used by him in all of his creation and all of the gods after him. No God live forever. No God lives to see the full 25,000 year cycle. They live so long and then another God is made. Another God comes about and when he comes about he takes up where that God left off at and he is wiser than all of the gods that was before him. So that is a long story to say. So we don't use that but we do use uh, one thing the messenger again taught me about he does not beget he, and he's not begotten is your nation. There is no nation that was begotten 
like you. And there is no nation look like you. There is no nation act like you. So there is none like him. He begetteth not nor he begotten. So we don't have anyone to beget anyone like us anymore. Now, the brother who questioned him, how do you know that Allah didn't have any children? The first brother said, believe the book or let it alone. Well, you have to believe the book, truthfully. Now, there's many parts in the book that you have to believe, but what part do you know that is true? That's what we have to look at again, as the messenger taught me. All the books that the devil put his hands on, he put some trickeration or trick of knowledge in it to trick and fool the people. That is taught by Messenger Elijah Muhammad and was taught to me personally. That's why today I'm able to say that I have what others do not have. Believe the book. Let it alone. Well, that can happen. If a man don't want to believe the book, he will let it alone. If a man believe the book, he will continue with the book. So, uh, our main objects today is to not to try to fix the God where that it will please us. We can't do that because we don't know definitely about it. <clears throat> if we had to believe just a book and take it definitely when there's so much of it that we couldn't use, we'd be in a terrible confusion again. So let us just take Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teaching and go with it. And don't try to think about whether Master Farad had children or got any. By the book saying he begets it's not now as he begotten because Master Farad was a long ways from the other thousands of gods that have appeared in the cycle of seven or eight trillion years ago. He was self-created. When you said he was self-created, he got here and then he created himself. When he created himself, he was already in the darkness. He did not come out, not until he was created. And when he come out, he was looking like that which he was in, which was black. That's why, again, that we can bear witness that God is a black man because of his nation that he first came with was black people. We don't know when the nation come about. That the messenger never said. I don't remember him saying when the black nation was created or when they come about. When we found ourselves, we was already here because the God had came already from triple darkness out of the universe like a baby being born. It don't know the day of his birth unless somebody tell him. And that has not been told the day of birth of the first God. That's right. He was self-created. But not saying Master Farad was self-created because he had a mother and father. And all the rest had a mother and father except that first God that was Satan laws he had to obey as we continue. Yes, that's true too. There was Satan laws that he had to obey of which that I will not try to go into. He had to study. That's right. After that first God. So that is self-created. No, that is not self-created. If he had to study, he had to t have a teacher. Master Farad told us that he had a teacher uh, 
and he went to school. He went to four schools here in America. Four universities. So now that we cannot teach and will not teach today. What happened when one lets the seeds abide within him? What happens to one's body? That is up to him. That is up to the person to let his seeds abide in him. And if he let his seeds abide in him and he have the nature that God had created him in to have, then he is a sinful person. Master Farad have said to us in meetings that we does not let our seeds abide in us. And the Bible says it too. It says it is better to put that seed in the belly of a whore than to uh, let it spill on the ground. That's Bible. So that's not yet self-created. One lets his seeds abide within him. What happens to one's body? His body whittles. He becomes so that he dries and he don't be nothing. He becomes to nothing due to the fact it destroys his thinking factories. It destroys the inward sides of him when it abides and remain in his body. That's why he made the one that you can put it in. Do you understand me, brothers? The other brother said, according to the teaching of Messenger Elijah Muhammad, the council sit to determine who is the supreme being. Did you understand what Messenger Elijah Muhammad said when the council will sit? The council will sit in the first God of the gods of the creations. Not now we don't sit down and choose a God. We can't. We can't. Because a God does not choose himself. He comes forth and when he has learned all the, about everything, then he is wiser than all of the rest and he is known as the supreme being. We don't choose that man. Let it be like that. Because you might get caught up in some of the questions that you answer. Messenger Elijah Muhammad, when he says, counsel sit, to whatever he was speaking about was done. If so, it was done from the beginning of the first God, not now. What counsel was it? What was the name of that council? We can't say the 24 elders. We can't say the council of 24 elders or 24 wise men choosing a God. They don't choose that. Let us stop using things that we cannot determine the end of it to establish the next 25,000 year cycle. That is predicted who will come about by them. They predict it. They doesn't come about wiser than the other one. So let us understand these things before that we use them. The knowledge passed down through father and son. Yes, the messenger said that in a letter that he wrote to the school in uh, Detroit of his son. And he said it concerning not gods, but concerning prophets. They, if you understand what he was talking about, prophets will pass it down to their sons and their sons pass it on to their sons what they receive. And many times the prophet son that he 
pass this knowledge down to, he doesn't be the prophet. Another one will take hold. Isn't it not true that our brother Muhammad in the East developed a body for the Savior? Did he not go? Before we go to that, did he not go? You say this, in the East develop a body, a body for the Savior. This was explained truthfully that he wanted what he wanted, the Father wanted a son to go to the West because we was here in America at the birth of Master Farad Muhammad. So he wanted a son and the purpose of this son to go to the West to bring the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to black America, the purpose of it was one that could go between visit white and visit black because black people will accept white people in the house regardless to what. Many of them don't want to be nothing but white people sitting around in the house. So he come looking like a white man. But him was a black man. He took to his father. And that is proven in English lesson number C1, which that I will take up with you someday. The, um, the brother Muhammad in the East. Master Farad's mother was a Caucasian woman. His father was a black man. He was uh, a black ab original man, as the messenger taught. Now we can't go back there and dig all of this up concerning Master Farad Muhammad's body unless that you would understand what is meant by much of it. So he was made in that shape. That's why his father wanted him in that shape so that he could go to white people and know what they are doing and come back to black people he know what they are doing. He could go between the two. We might explain a lot of this on Savior's Day, February 26, 1990. Did he not go to the Caucasus Mountain? to find a certain type of lady, Caucasian, to bring forth the God. He went there. The God had already been spoken of, of what he would look like, even before that he, even before his father was born. The Savior. Is it not true? So I'm trying to determine where the standard of reference sets. The reference, brother, is set with that which that he was trying to do and wanted to do to send a son to the West. That was uh, the counsel, as you would say, in that one man. It was one man wanted this to happen. The same if you had a son today let us put this plainer. Messenger Elijah, my son, son W.D. Muhammad, was wanted by the messenger because he was the only one that was born in the nation of Islam. So he wanted him to take over at his death. So he did. But he didn't follow up his teaching. Now, would that be enough to let you know not saying that our Savior, Master Farad, was like that. No. To go to the Caucasus Mountain to find a certain type of lady, a woman, a Caucasian woman, he wanted that son to be born in that manner. That's why he went to the Caucasus Mountain, as you call it. What mountain he went to to find this woman 
Some says another mountain. Some say he didn't go to a mountain. He said he did went in the mountain, and those were the people that was driven out from uh, the Holy Land because they had been hidden around uh, in the homes of the people in that in that part of the world or the country in which they reside. Caucasian was hidden there among the people. To bring forth the God, the Savior. He went there for that purpose because he wanted his son to come to the West. Is it not true? Yes, it is true that he did have a son to come to the West. And that son is none other than Master Farad Muhammad, who is the God in this day. But Master Farad Muhammad went to school. He went to school and his father would get up all kinds of magazines and books or whatnot and give to him to read. And that focused his mind upon reading to know everything that he could know. And other things that was he was driven to. That's why he visited schools all around. This was not his first time coming to America in 1930. He had visited America before. So we must understand much. There is so much when you're talking about God, brothers and sisters. When you're talking about God, there is so much that you don't know nothing about. So let us just say that he is the God. None can do what he does. Don't us try to take the God until that we learn who he is and what he is and his determination. And he wrote it and left it in our present. Why would Allah God with his supreme excuse me he I missed the line. So I'm trying to determine where the standard of reference set. The standard of reference is set, was set in Messenger Elijah Muhammad, and Messenger Elijah Muhammad did not teach you all about Master Farad Muhammad. As he said to me when I was questioning him one time concerning the supreme investigator he told me he, I said I remember when he set it up he said to me don't nobody know all what my God taught me he said don't nobody knows it I shut my mouth I, did, I wasn't speaking on knowing what the God know I was only saying that when the investigator was chosen I was in the midst when it when this brother was chosen as a supreme investigator. Now there are some people said there was no such thing as supreme. They just don't know. They don't understand. You must have good knowledge. God with his supreme knowledge, wisdom and understanding set the life in us not to be used. Wait a minute. How is you saying that? God, with supreme knowledge, wisdom and understanding, set the life in us not to be used. Used in what manner? If it's in us and it's not to be used, we've got to use this life. Now what 
manner of life shall you be sane to say not to be used. The first brother repeated, when a person becomes God, he begets not, nor is he begotten. He had to be begotten if Master Farad's father went to the Caucasus Mountain to get a woman, a lady as you say, to bring forth this Savior. Then he didn't go there and said to, to her, listen, I want you as my wife and I want you to bring forth a son. So you go in the house there and get in the bed and bring forth a son. Yeah, but did she do it by herself? No, because Master Farad said he had a father and a mother and his father was black and his mother was white. We didn't know that not until he come because we didn't have no, no knowledge of nothing. Now, if the God was brought forth or if he had been begotten by this woman and if, his, if God did not beget him then who begot him? Answer that question and see if you would not find that his father and mother begotten him. She begotten him because she received the germ in her womb and here comes Master Farad after nine consecutive months like you did. No such thing. No such thing as believing that a reference is set because God had supreme knowledge and he was not gotten by a woman. After the first God, all of the rest of them was begotten by a woman seven or eight trillion years ago which that we cannot go back any farther. What happened before then is something different but once he becomes God, he begets, not nor is he begotten. What is it that he would not beget when he comes? What is it? If he does not get married when he comes, the same as the conversation with me and Master Farad, by telling me the time is not now to get married. He said, someday I will be married. He said, but it's not now. The same thing you say. I'm not going to get married right now. I'm going to wait till such and such a time. Then I get married. Maybe you don't get married. And during that time, maybe you don't get a child by somebody. You try to keep from it. But in the knowledge of the righteousness of God, he does not commit that kind of an act. Not until he does get married. So I can't say he's married now. I can't say he got a son or daughter now. Because I haven't seen him. Let that be your answer, please, sir. Number 11. We need ideas on how to sell the Muhammad Speaks Continuous Paper. Continue with the paper, brother, and, and as you sell them. Continue with them. Be yourself. Act yourself. And in this brochure that I shall send to you of uh, how handling the people, 
and it will teach you plenty of things of what to say and how to do in the actions of Muhammad Speaks continuous papers of how to talk to the people. That's a thing we must learn how to meet and talk to people. If we cannot learn that, we are at loss with people. We can't go to a person arguing or trying to say that you know or trying to demonstrate or read the paper to the person before they before they uh, buy the paper. He won't, he won't buy it if you try to read it to him because you don't read it to him. He won't buy it. So use a good judgment among yourselves as we go along. And as we go along, I will try to help you in all manner that I possibly can in Muhammad Speaks Papers Continues. Use your best of intelligence among the people on the street. That's where you use the best of your intelligence. Use it among them. Talk to them in intelligence manner and be intelligence with them. And you will find that they will look for you to buy a paper from you. A brother suggests number 12. A brother suggests that receipts always be given for money donated when donated even if you are just passing the basket to avoid arguments later when you give money to the temple brothers and sisters or to the child that gives a penny whatever they give not in the basket give to them a receipt give to them a receipt not in the basket when you how uh, to give a receipt in the basket has never yet been officially given to us by the messenger nor by master Farad to give anything in the basket later I will tell you exactly how the basket is but you don't give a receipt in it. I will tell you as soon as I possibly can the meaning of the basket. <clears throat> so rest at it and rest at ease because it does not mean that you give the receipt any time that you give to the secretary or whosoever takes up the money you give them a receipt when you pass the basket, that is for an other occasion. And that occasion is to be kept clean and clear by a responsible person. All money should be kept clean and clear by a responsible person. And that person shall be honest at all times. Must be an honest brother or honest sister to have that with him because money is a very teacherous thing to keep at times. Brother Ezekiel asks number 13. Brother Ezekiel asked the Supreme Minister On one of Minister Firecon's radio broadcast, he stated that Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad give the Honorable Elijah Muhammad 108 books to study. And he said that all of those books were pertaining to Prophet Muhammad. He said that Master Farad wanted the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to know all about the works of Prophet Muhammad and I want it and I want to know if that is true. Coming to a fax brother I have heard the messenger mention 104 books I've heard him mention 108 I believe but mostly it was 104. 
now to know whether Minister Farrakhan was right about Master Farad Muhammad wanted the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to know all about the works of Prophet Muhammad. All you had to do was just read his history. That is all of that was there in the 108 books. Then uh, why not just take up the history of Muhammad or which that I read to, to know about him from his life to his death. So if that was all that he just give him the books for him to read about Muhammad, no, that wouldn't be it. So ask Minister Farrakhan a question, how does he define such statement? You see, our people, some of our people, Muslim brothers and sisters, I'm not just saying you, brother, or you there, I'm not just saying that. There's so many of them uh, wants to know things, and they don't know where to start at. Do as I do sometimes. When they say such, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Number 14, Brother Muhammad Bia. He spells that name Bia, B E Y A H. Some spell it B E Y, Bay. Basically, I am interested in the direct instructions from Almighty God Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. I am interested in the proper procedure that brothers should conduct themselves and carry themselves in. I would like to have those procedures directly from you. Thank you, brother. You will get them in a brochure, the howling of the people. You will get them. Thank you for asking such question. Number 15. Brother Ahmed Musin. I would like to ask you, Minister John Muhammad. I wrote the letter. I wrote the letter. I can't make that word out. But I I guess for name or something of it. I wrote the letter while or to the Nation of Islam represented by Brother Farrakhan. And I would like to know if I should go through the same procedure in joining with you and during the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, do I have to go through the same procedure? As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam, brother. No, you don't write a letter to me. I will send to you, if you send a letter to me, saying that you uh, wish to uh, connect yourself with the nation of Islam, I will send to you one to join in a card to join in the Nation of Islam, and I also will send you one concerning the name. And that one concerning the name is the one that is just as dull if you had wrote a letter to Master Farad Muhammad. Number 16. Brother Muhammad Biyah wish to teach Islam as taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He wants to sit up under the Supreme Minister and follow instructions. Come on, brother, ask your question, whatever that you wish, and I pray, Allah, that you will become very good in the teaching of Islam as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught it. Number 17. 
A brother made reference to Meshan Elijah Muhammad saying, My true followers are in the streets, and those who call themselves followers of the messenger at that time were not really the true followers, based on the messenger statement. Yes, I guess so. It was based on his statement, because he did not mean that all of the true followers was out in the street. He said some of his true followers was out in the street. Not all of them. If all of them was true, then what am I? What are you? What are the rest of those that uh, accept Islam under his teaching? They was not true followers, and look what they done. Look what they did to help him through this journey. And they was not true followers, my dear beloved brother. No. Some out there that he, if he's a true follower, I pray to God that he will come on because we have not got him. Who's going to convert that one to make him the true follower now if he's out in the streets? These that I see, many of them don't believe the messenger, though. don't believe in nothing that the messenger has given. Many of them. And they are drunk, dope-headed, crazy, savages, and all kinds. Now he's got to be made. Now who's going to make him? He can't make anyone. So you got to have a true follower to make him. Thank you, sir. Number 18. No brother said, peace be upon him, when saying, mention Elijah Muhammad's name. Now did anyone actually say that the messenger was dead? They said the messenger is no longer with us. Well, saying be, peace be upon him is a good word to say to him, say concerning him, which means that he has now passed in death. When saying mention Elijah Muhammad's name, and saying those words mean that he's passed in death. He is not with us, but he's dead. Nor did anyone actually say that the messenger was dead. Maybe they think he's still alive, but I say he is dead. They say the messenger is no longer with us. I say that is true too. The messenger is no longer with us. I thank you, my dear beloved brother and sisters, Please take what I have said is the truth. That is the end of your question, and that is the end of my answering at the present time. May Allah bless you forever. Assalamu alaikum.